What's up guys, Visual Anthony here, and today we're gonna talk about lights. The lights we use and how we use them on our productions. So before we get started, if you like this kind of video, you like this kind of content, be sure to subscribe to the channel and give us a thumbs up. All that kind of YouTube stuff. All right, let's get into it. So the video is pretty much going to be as basic and simple as possible. Just simply going to run down the list of our go-to lights and just give you some ideas on how we use those lights for our productions. So let's dive in. All right, first on the list, we're just going to take it from the top. Like I said, it's going to be laid back. I've already had a, uh, a glass of whiskey today, so... Uh, don't judge me. But we're just going to take it from the top, start with our, I guess, most expensive, most popular lights, and then trickle on down into our least expensive lights. So first light on the list is the Aperture 300D Mark I. And uh, we love this light. I love this light just simply because A, it's aperture, and B, it's just powerful. We needed a light that we could use both indoor and outdoor if we needed to compete with the sun or other uh, extremely powerful lights. This light would definitely do the trick. So um, definitely had to invest in that. We're not gonna go into too many technical uh, details about the lights, but I will run over some of the, uh, the details of it. It's a 300 watt light 5500 kelvin color temperature and one of the main reasons why we go with aperture is simply just because the the color accuracy um, all of their lights have a 95 plus uh, cri rating and when you're doing videos and creating videos for these high-end projects and you know you have clients that are that are trusting you with their content and they want the best so we have to provide them with the best. So that's why we choose Aperture. And no, I was not paid to say that. So I don't really know all that, all the stuff about Lux and Lumens and all that kind of stuff. I just know, is it bright? Is it not? Is it going to do what we need it to do or is it not? But just to give you some reference, if those of, uh, those of you watching are actually into that kind of technical stuff of your lighting, it's 48,000 lux at roughly a, a foot and a half and 142,000 lux with the uh, Fresnel mount. Uh, we don't really use the, the Fresnel mount all that much um, unless we're pushing through some kind of uh, diffusion or something like that and we just need a little extra power out of the light. But for most everything, 95% of the stuff that we do the 300D right out of the box just takes care of it all. Uh, moving down the line to my new favorite light is the 300D Mark II. So a little backstory, we had the 300D, we were doing a production for, we were doing a commercial shoot for a client of ours, and the setting was a hotel room, the TV was on, so we needed something to kind of give that general, this girl is watching TV effect. So um, at the time that we were in pre-production, Aperture had released the 120D Mark II, and I think they had teased the 300D Mark II, but it, there was no dates announced or anything like that. So I went ahead and bought the 120D Mark II for that production, and when we used it, I just it just really wasn't bright enough for what we needed it to be. And then uh, I'd say a couple weeks after we bought that light, the 300D Mark II released. So in traditional Amazon fashion, we returned that thing to, to B&H and got the 300D Mark II and added it to the kit. And uh, ever since then, it's been the primary go-to light for 100% of our uh, shoots. I like the 300D Mark II because well, A, it's supposed to be 20% brighter than the 300D Mark I. 
I have never tested that, but I'm going to take their word for it. Another thing that's kind of minor, but I really appreciate as the person who's setting up the lights and stuff like that would be this yoke design. I don't mind the yoke of the original 120D and 300D, but if you have the Mark 1s, then you know that they have the teeth. There's a rubber washer in between it. And a lot of times when, when I place the light and I throw the light dome on there, especially the big light dome, put it on there. If it's not cinched down super tight, that light's going to sag over time. And it's just, uh, it's just a nuisance and a headache to work with on set, especially when you're just trying to, to get the job done. So I could definitely appreciate the metal on metal contact that the new um, tightening mechanism, I guess that's what you would call it for, for lack of a better term. So I could really appreciate that because that thing ain't going anywhere. So another thing that I like about the Mark II series lights compared to the Mark I would be just the ease of, I guess you could say ease of use. They're both easy to use, but mainly the setup and breakdown of those lights. So for instance, with the Mark I, you're, you're not really pulling a handful of things out and just hooking it up and getting the shot, right? So you have the light, then you have the cable that goes to the control box, and then you have the cable that goes from the control box to the power supply, and then you have the cable that goes from the power supply to the wall or the power source. So you're dealing with two boxes and three cables as opposed to the Mark II where it's just the one box since they put the control box and the power supply in the same contraption. And then you have two cables. So you're running from the light to the control box, power supply, out of that into the power source. And it definitely adds that whole new element of efficiency when you're on set because now I can just pull the light out, couple cables, hook everything up in a breeze, and we're, we're ready to shoot. Definitely my two favorite lights out of everything that I have. So moving on to the next one would be this guy here. So we'll go ahead and cut that, boom. So this light here is the, I know you can't see it, it's the IntelliTech LC160. So it's a light cloth. Um, what I like about the IntelliTech lights is the portability. And that was the main driving factor for the purchase was just the overall portability. At the time of purchasing the light, we were traveling a pretty good bit, um, specifically, you know, air travel. So I wanted something that, that not only had good color accuracy and was durable and professional grade and stuff like that, but I wanted something that I didn't have to check uh, with my other gear. Uh, I wanted something that was going to give me enough light output that I could also keep in my carry-on bag just in case for whatever reason my check luggage didn't arrive, I could still perform for my clients. And though this is a, a two foot by two foot source, it actually folds up to, you know, a 12 by 12 size, um, which when I saw that and I was like, okay, I got to look at this thing. So I checked it out and went ahead and bought it on a whim and didn't really know too much about the company as a whole or anything like that. But ever since I've had the light, I had a, a couple issues. I actually hooked it up wrong and the customer service of IntelliTech was phenomenal. They got right back to me as, as quick as I could imagine and helped me sort it out. I didn't have to send anything back or anything like that. It, it was just it was just an, a very easy process and very smooth process to get that working. We got it working again and now it's been an amazing light to have. This particular version is 160 watts. It's a two by two uh, source that comes with a soft box and a diffusion and as well as a 40 degree grid, if I'm not mistaken. Could be 35, 40, around 30 to 40 degrees. Uh, comes with the grid like that. So like I said, we mainly bought this light because of the the travel aspect. So this is pretty much the main light source in our travel kit. We When we travel and we're flying places, we don't take the 300Ds and stuff like that unless, unless the project calls for it. And then 90% of the time we would probably just rent 
you know, something from ShareGrid that was closer to the location where we will be shooting. Um, moving on down the list, we have the same uh, IntelliTech, the little sister. This is the uh, IntelliTech Light Cloth LC50. So it's a 50 watt version of this guy. And uh, it's only 12 inches by 12 inches. And uh, it's great for it's great for a nice key light in your office. So if you do live streams and stuff like that, I definitely recommend something like this. It, they're both bicolor, and you can see this one. The range is actually, let's see how far it goes. So it goes down to 3,000 Kelvin, all the way up to I think 900 or 9,999. So if we go all the way up, so just about 10,000 Kelvin, real blue tone there. But uh, we're going to put it right back at 5,600. There we go. Boom. It pretty much comes with the same thing as the LC160. So it comes with, and you can see how thick it is. So it comes with the soft box, the diffusion in there, and then the grid as well. And uh, I would take that apart. I don't know why I didn't think of that. But when you take it apart, it's literally just a flat mat of LEDs. All right, next up we have the Aperture HR672 light kit. Say that 10 times fast. So basically that's these guys here. Hello. Calm down. So that's these guys here. They're uh 672 LED, I think 45 50 watt ish uh LED panels. Uh they work great. I bought them at the beginning of, pretty much at the beginning of my career because we were doing a lot of interviews. Let me, there we go. We were doing a lot of interviews, a lot of, you know, corporate stuff like that. And we just wanted some good quality lights that weren't really going to break the bank because we were just getting started with everything. So what I did is I bought the light kit. And then I got a soft box. I actually got the, they have different variants. So they have the S version, the W version, and then I think the C, which is more of the, the bicolor. So we just have the, the traditional basic 5,500 Kelvin uh, panels. So basically we throw the, uh, the spot variant with the soft box and it's our main key source in an interview. The W is for wide angle. So we use those as a fill or some accent lighting, some backlight, stuff like that. And it just really makes uh, sense. And it's just an overall good kit to have. So the three lights comes with this little frost diffusion here, as well as a CTO uh, diffusion. Um, since they aren't, uh, since they're not bicolor, um, they are battery powered. I like them because you can power them both by MPF style batteries or the AC adapters, which the kit comes with uh, all of that. So in the kit, I think we paid $750 for it. And in the kit, you get the three lights, the, uh, the various fil two filters for each light, and then it came with three AC adapters and six uh, MPF 970 batteries. These lights are great because they always work in a pinch. You throw those batteries on there, throw it on a light stand, or have one of your assistants hold it up, and you can get a, a, some nice lighting, some nice good quality lighting uh, in a pinch if you're one of those run and gun guys like myself. And it also comes with these little, I, I don't really want to call them adapters, but they're just kind of like uh, little mounts, so it allows you to uh, angle the light this way, up, back, down, left, right, side to side. You know how that's how we like to ride. Something like that. So next on the list, we got this little guy here. This is the Aperture M9. OG Aperture M9. Shout out to all my OG Aperture fans out there. Um, and we have this light just simply because it's an M, I mean, it's an M9. Why, why wouldn't you want a credit card size light source? Um, I like it because it comes with these little gel things and how, how I use this is a lot of times I can use it to, to accent stuff. We, my wife originally bought it for me for Christmas a couple years ago because we were doing a lot of vlog stuff. So having this uh, light on the camera uh, gave us a, a nice source 
for vlogging in low light situations. Uh, so it just made sense at the time. She wanted to get me something that was video related and I, I didn't want her to spend a whole bunch of money. So I just said, hey, you know, give me this light. It's kind of cute. Um, so a lot of times I'll use this as just an accent. So put it somewhere, you know, use it something like a, like a backlight or a hair light or something like that. Um, the most, I'd say most of the time I'll use these little floppy gels that it came with, throw that on there and especially this CTO colored one. So more times than not, I've put this in a lamp as a practical source in the shot. Um, so a lot of times when you're actually using the lamp as a practical, they're just not as bright. You can't, or they're actually too bright. So you can't really uh, dim them down, raise them up if you need to, to make them actually pop and stand out in the frame. So what we do is we just take those bulbs out or um, turn them off all together and then we'll just tape this thing up into the lampshade and it always turns out pretty good for us. So that's pretty much our go-to uh, lights. Those are the lights that we've invested in over the years and they pretty much handle and take care of 100% of, uh, of the work that we do. So how do we use these lights? Let's look at a few different things. So most of the stuff that we shoot, we're shooting uh, B-roll and interviews. That's just a lot of stuff that we shoot. Um, we're doing testimonials, we're doing uh, employee interviews, stuff like that. Two types of interviews that we like to do, I guess on the production side, would be more of your corporate type interviews. They're well lit, almost overly lit. Everything's just kind of evenly lit, bright white lights. And then the other side is more of a cinematic view, you know, something like this cinematic ah anyway um on the corporate side of things we like to throw the 300d uh, so we'll throw the 300d as your main source with the full size light dome from aperture um, we'll throw the diffusion on there with the honeycomb grid and then that will be our main key and then if it calls for it or if it just makes sense or we just can't get enough fill and light with the with the uh, 300d mark ii then we'll bring in either the second 300d or one of these panels here to act as that fill and then we definitely use one of these boomed out for a backlight and that will pretty much tackle just about any corporate interview that you could imagine on the cinematic side i actually like to use one light and one key light and one backlight. So what I'll do is I'll use the 300D with the light dome, either the mini or the big one. I like to use the big one just because it gives you a little bit of extra. I'll throw the honeycomb on there and actually I move it a little more to the side. So to the side of the face. So if the camera is on this side, you get a nice little shadow on that opposite side. And pretty much any uh, any shoot that we're doing, if it's more cinematic, then we just like to use the one key and the one backlight and call it a day. For travel, like I said, we travel with the IntelliTech kit. So I just, again, it's two lights. I bring the, uh, the 160 and the 50. So what's nice about the IntelliTech is I can fold I can fold the big one up to the same size as the little one. The softbox actually folds up within itself and is pretty flat. So I basically throw these two lights in my backpack with the controllers and the power supplies as well as the diffusion and grids. It doesn't take up too much real estate in my bag. So I, I'm still able to, to carry clothes or any extra stuff that I want to carry on with me. So one of the main things that I've learned over the years when dealing with lighting is it's not so much about the lights that you have as much as it's about the modifiers that you have. So a lot of times, and one of the mistakes that I made is like, I got to have the, the next light. I got to have the greatest light. The br I need a brighter light. I need a better light. And then when you get these lights, you realize, uh, I have to shape this light. I have to diffuse it. It's too harsh. If I was to turn this on and put it on myself, it's going to blind. It's going to blind me. I'm not going to be able to see what I'm doing. So once I realized that and got into that mindset of it, it's not so much about 
all of the lights that you have, it's about how are you modifying that light on set. So when we're talking about diffusion or, uh, or you know, things like your honeycomb grids and, and stuff like that and shaping that light, negative fill, um, you know, just all different kinds of things. So what we like to use is the aperture. <laughs> we're aperture. I'm an aperture fanboy. What can I say? You know, so I like to use the, the light dome. Um, the big light dome as well as the light dome mini, various honeycomb grids and stuff like that to kind of focus that light on the subject. So I took the honeycomb grid off of this because I actually wanted that light to spill because without, when I put the grid on this particular source here, it was making the background a little too dark and I just didn't want that. I want to light up everything. Let's lift it up. So, um, but when you're actually wanting to, to key light and you actually want to control that light in a particular interview, then you want to put that grid on there so it shapes that light and focuses that light on the subject. And you don't have all the spill and it gives you a little bit more control in your set. So if I wanted to put one of these 672s up somewhere else in the background to kind of uh, add a little bit more character to the frame, then I wouldn't have to compete with my main key source. Um, another, another good way that we do things is with uh, muslin. This is a big sheet of unbleached muslin. So I like the unbleached muslin just because it does give you a little bit more of a warmer tone. Even if you're using a 5500 source, if you bounce it off of your unbleached muslin, it's just gonna make it a little bit warmer. And especially if you throw a tungsten light on there, it's gonna make it extremely warm and a nice overall feel to that light. So you can bounce, I like the I like the muslin because you can bounce, bounce the light off the muslin to kind of really soften that light, or you can even shoot through it to really diffuse the light. My space here is a little too small, so I didn't want to actually build out the frame, but one of my favorite things to use on set is the Westcott Scrim Gym. We have the 4x4 uh, frame. We have a couple of those that uh, with various levels of diffusion and stuff like that on there. Um, so I like to use those because A, it makes me feel cool, just to be completely transparent with you. It makes me feel like a cinematographer it makes me feel like a uh like a a lighting guy on set and another thing that's really cool about using the 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 four by four frames and the eight by six by frames and stuff like that is our clients are paying us a lot of money to produce these videos for them and a lot of times it's hard for them, unless they're really educated on the video production side of everything, it's hard for them to visualize that money going to good use, if that makes sense. So it's not so much about we need these frames so because we can't do it any other way, because I could easily use, you know, the light dome and, you know, all this other kind of stuff to get the same results that I would with the four by four frame. But when that client walks on set and they're sitting down and they see this big four by four, six by eight by, you know, frame with this, with these lights just blasting through it, it makes them feel a little bit more comfortable with the money that they've spent with us. If that makes sense. That's not the only reason we do it, but that has a lot to do with it. Just the professional aesthetic that you bring when someone walks on set and you have flags and, you know, diffusion frames all over the place and it just makes it feel like they're on a Hollywood production. It gives them a little bit more peace of mind um, when they walk on set and see the the level of professionalism that you've uh, added to their product or uh, to the video that they paid you to produce for them. That's our go-to lights. That's our, that's our lighting kit. That's the lights that, these are the lights that we chose that we've um, accumulated over the years and they 
they knock productions out of the park, they look good, they, they're reliable, they're made by amazing companies. Um, so big shout out to Aperture and Intellitech. Um, I, there's, I couldn't say enough good things about these two companies from customer service to the quality of the product. They just make amazing lights and I highly recommend any of their products. Um, and again, I wasn't paid to say that. I've bought all these lights with my own money and it hurts sometimes when you think about it. All right, that's a wrap for this video, guys. I appreciate you watching. It means more than you know. If you like the video, definitely consider subscribing, maybe leaving us a comment down below, and tell us oh, what kind of lights do you go to? What, what are your go-to lights when you're uh, shooting videos for clients or yourself or whatever it might be? What are those lights? Let us know down below. Uh, definitely like the video if you like the video, and if you didn't like the video, just don't give us a thumbs down. This is what it looks like. Love you guys. Until next time.